Hello and welcome to our 10th study through the book of Exodus. <clears throat> and today we come to Exodus chapter 12, verse 31. Father, we ask that you would add your blessings to the word that we are about to study. In Jesus' name, amen. Exodus 12, 31. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have requested. The word of God that Moses spoke to, to uh, or through, um, excuse me, the word of God that Moses spoke came to pass. It is the word that he spoke to Pharaoh. He told the king that his servants would humble themselves before Moses and beg the Hebrews to leave, and that is exactly what is happening right here. 32. Take your flocks and herds, as you have said, and go, and also bless me. Pharaoh thought he could boss God around. He thought he could disobey God and get God to compromise. But it was all a waste of time. Verse 33. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. For otherwise, they said, we will all die. The firstborn in Egypt are dead. But as far as the Egyptian people know, they may be just those firstborn. They may just be the first wave of death. If they don't get the Israelites out, who knows? The secondborn may be next. This God of the Hebrews plays hardball. Verse 34. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it, excuse me, carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. God never has to hurry, but sometimes we do in order to stay in his will. In verse 34, or th- verse 35, the Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. God gave the Hebrews favor with the Egyptians and they plundered the Egyptians of material possessions. Verse 36 The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. You say, oh, I get it. God was sort of like Robin Hood robbing from the rich and giving to the poor? No. God did not rob the Egyptians. The earth is the Lord's and everything on it, the Bible says. God gave His people what belonged to Him. Not only that, the Israelites earned that wealth with all their slave labor for all those many years. 37. The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. There were about 600,000 men on foot beside women and children. And so the battle with stubborn Pharaoh really was just the beginning of sorrows for Moses. There are over 2 million Hebrews and Moses is in charge of each one of them. And that's not even the tough part. Notice verse 38. Many other people went up with them, as well as large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. Another name for the many other people is mixed multitude. Another name for mixed multitude, spiritual arsenic, spiritual poison. There are a bunch of unsaved people mixed in with the Israelites, and they will be nothing but trouble. Verse 39. With the dough they had brought from Egypt, they baked cakes of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. Now the length of time the Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. 
other ancient manuscripts refer to the Israelites being in Egypt and Canaan for 430 years. In Galatians 3.17, the Bible says that there was 430 years from the confirming of God's promise to Abraham until the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. And that would be 420 or 430 years total from the time that God spoke to Abraham until the time that the Israelites left Egypt, 41. It says, At the end of the 430 years to the very day, all the Lord's divisions left Egypt on that very day. God is precise and his timing is perfect. Verse 42 Because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt, on this night all the Israelites are to keep vigil to honor the Lord for the generations to come. The first Passover was a night of honor to the Lord. It was a night to remember because they were set free. The last Passover that God recognized was even bigger. It was the night his son was betrayed. And that last one is even more important to remember. The first one set Israel free from Egypt. The last one set God's people free from eternal hell. 43. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, These are the regulations for the Passover. No foreigner is to eat of it. A foreigner refers to someone who did not know the Lord. Verse 44. Any slave you have bought may eat of it after you have circumcised him, but a temporary resident and a hired worker may not eat of it. A sojourner, a hired worker, or somebody who just passed through. They didn't know the Lord either. That's why they could not observe the Passover. You see, the things of God, including the Passover, are holy things. They mean a lot to God. And they are not to be done for kicks by those who really don't care. 46. It must be eaten inside one house. Take none of the meat outside the house. Do not break any of the bones. Here is an example of a command that made no sense at all to the Israelites when they received it. Do not break any of the Passover lamb's bones. But you know, I want you to remember that that lamb was a picture of the sacrificial death of Christ, the Lamb of God. And unlike others who were crucified, Jesus did not have any of his bones broken. And so, the lesson for us is obey God even when you do not understand why. It's not important that we understand. It is important that we obey. See? God knows what he's doing. He has a reason for everything that he commands, even if he doesn't fill us in on the details. 47. The whole community of Israel must celebrate it. An alien living among you who wants to celebrate the Lord's Passover must have all the males in his household circumcised. Then he may take part like one born in the land. No uncircumcised male may eat of it. The same law applies to the native-born and to the alien living among you. In other words, if a stranger wants to be one of my people, let him. Don't let anyone stop that from happening. However, he must come on my terms. That means the outward sign of a relationship with God in those days. That means circumcision. 50. All the Israelites did just what the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And so far, so good. They are riding high off their deliverance from Egypt. Pretty easy to obey God when all is well. The real test will come after the newness wears off. Verse 51 And on that very day the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt by their divisions. Divisions here means armies or assembly. It's talking about the Israelites leaving in an orderly, regulated manner. Verse 1 and 2 of chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male. 
the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether man or animal. Everything in the world belongs to God. But the Lord is staking out a special claim on all the firstborn in Israel. Because God spared all the Hebrew firstborn, He is commanding them to dedicate all their firstborn to Him. Verse 3, Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. Eat nothing containing yeast. They were helpless. They had been hopeless slaves in Egypt. If it had not been for the strong arm of Almighty God, they would have remained slaves. And God did not want them ever to forget that He got them out of a mess that they could not get themselves out of. Verse 4 Today, in the month of Abib, you are leaving. When the Lord brings you into the land, the Canaanites of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and Jebusites, the land he swore to your forefathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you are to observe this ceremony in this month. For seven days eat bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day hold the festival to the Lord. Eat unleavened bread during those seven days. Nothing with, with yeast in it is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. And the Israelites took this command to heart. They were known to search every part of their home with a candle to make sure that there wasn't a speck of yeast anywhere. Verse 8 On that day tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord should be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time year after year. The Feast of Unleavened Bread served to remind future generations of Israelites that they were God's people. These future generations will not see the mighty miracles that God did in Egypt, but they would be reminded of them each year during that Passover feast. And that was very important to God. Verse 11. After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you as he promised on oath to you and your forefathers, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. All firstborn male animals had to be sacrificed to God. It was a reminder of how God spared the firstborn Hebrew baby boys or Hebrew boys in general down in Egypt. 13. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey. Now stop there for a second. Well, no, let's read this. Redeem with the lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Now, there are two categories of animals, according to God, clean and unclean. The clean ones are edible and suitable for sacrifice in the Old Testament. The unclean are not edible and not suitable for sacrifice. Donkeys were among the unclean. That is why they could not be offered to God. That is why there, or they needed to be, there needed to be a substitute offering given for firstborn donkeys. Now, if someone didn't or couldn't substitute for it, they had to break the donkey's neck. God is saying, if it is unclean, redeem it or destroy it, because I don't want it. And it's the same with people. If people are not redeemed by the blood of Christ, then they will go to hell. God doesn't want them. Get redeemed or get destroyed. That's the choice. And the last part of verse 13, and we'll stop with this. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. No choice when it came to children. The firstborn child must always have an animal offered to God in its place. Two reasons for that. Human sacrifice is murder. Also, man is unclean. 
man is born a sinner. Even if it wasn't murder, human sacrifice would be worthless because man, like the donkey, is unclean. We'll pick up our study in verse 14.